Welcome to the Saber Roar. My name is Cassie. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Malik, and this is our first episode for the sixth season of the Saber Roar. Today, we are talking all things homecoming for 2014. And everything homecoming was dominated by the junior class of 2016, baby! Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, you can see. Every other year, FHS, in conjunction with Freighted Hospital, holds a mock crash to teach students about the real-life consequences of distracted driving. Administration brought the juniors and the seniors to the football field to present a simulated car crash. When the covers were removed, students were shown the results of drunk driving, heard a 911 call, and watched help arrive to assess the scene. The mock crash happened during what we have called our high-risk behaviors week where we address high-risk behaviors that not only young adults make choices to do, but all adults do. The situation was treated like any car crash, which included a field sobriety test, removing the victims from the vehicle, and placing them in nearby ambulance trucks. For the first time, the Flight for Life helicopter also made an appearance to treat the critical patient. Afterwards, the students were brought to the auditorium for a presentation by a Freudert Hospital trauma nurse. The students then learned about the casualties and things the injured party would have to live with. The parents of the patient who died came and mourned their daughter and the Franklin police went over the charges that the driver would have to face. The mock crash brought awareness to students to stay safe for the homecoming activities ahead. We kicked off homecoming week with students expressing their spirit through their attire. The week started with an unusual tribute to a State Farm commercial. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. Students wore red shirts and of course khakis. On Tuesday, the school is filled with intellectuals, preps, ex-gamers, and jacks. To honor a recent remodeling, Wednesday was construction day. It was hard to tell who was working on the school and who was attending school. To coordinate with this year's homecoming theme, Thursday Spirit Day was under the sea. Finally, to finish the week off, Friday all students wear black and gold to support our mighty sabers. The high spirits continued outside of school as the classes prepared their floats for this year's homecoming parade. There were many exciting float ideas for this year's Under the Sea theme parade and float building competition. The basic theme for our float is a pirate ship theme because we wanted to take a different approach on the Under the Sea theme. The freshmen's fishbowl and senior Spongebob floats were also strong contenders to win the spirit points. These complex ideas required each grade to put in multiple hours in order to complete their floats on time. So far we put in eight and a half hours and that was yesterday and today. So, so far only two days and I think we'll probably add another day, maybe two more days to it. So, I don't know, in the end probably over 10, 11, 12 hours. Absent this year was the sophomore class who did not participate in the float building. In the end, the juniors were victorious for the third straight year. After hours of hard work, the floats were ready to be showcased. You already know the juniors got that on lockdown. Congratulations for them to win it. The well-prepared floats, along with the great planning of the Sabre Spirit Club, started off the 2014 parade. On the Thursday of homecoming week, students and the Franklin community gathered on 51st Street to watch the 2014 homecoming parade. The parade is important to the week because it highlights the variety of clubs and sports at FHS and gives them an opportunity to show their school spirit. Students were excited to participate and showcase their involvement while strong attendance from the community contributed to the positive spirit. Since Thursday is a big game night for sports events, next year the Sabre Spirit Club is considering moving the day of the parade to Wednesday so there can be even more involvement for students in the parade. As the battle between classes for the best float ended, the competition for the Powderpuff title had just begun. This year's homecoming Powerpuff Games began in the elimination stage where both junior and senior classes dominated the freshman and sophomore teams. With both teams on a roll going into the final, it was sure to be a great game. The seniors started strong with an early touchdown pass by Josie and a catch by Kristen. And boom goes the dynamite. After a quick halftime talk by Coach Eater, the juniors rallied back with a long running touchdown by Carly and a game-winning catch in the final seconds of the game by Courtney. With the final score being 12-6, both teams showed great sportsmanship. We caught up with Carly after the game to talk about the win. You know, I just I pushed through. I uh, didn't know if I grabbed my flag or not, but you know, you just keep running and hope you can get there, and that's how I did. Anything else you'd like to say? Class of 2016, that's what's up. With this win in the finals, the juniors continued their winning streak through three consecutive Powder Puff championships. Way to go. This year's homecoming pep rally was a success, full of fun, games, and performances by students. 
There was a return of the famous Hunger Games this year with the addition of a teacher team, Mr. Michon and Mr. Wassmiller. The state champion Palms delivered an unbelievable performance. Probably one of the biggest highlights for me was the one, the victory cheer. All, all the classes were loud at the, at the beginning of the pep rally as well as the end. The homecoming court was introduced and Brian and Paige were crowned this year's king and queen. Malik and Cassie from the Saber Roar got the crowd on their feet with the Saber Roar Superfan t-shirt toss and the first golden moment cookie giveaway. And the winner, Omar, received the first giant cookie of the year. The pep rally ended with a victory cheer as each grade cheered to win the spirit stick. Giving away t-shirts and the cookie at the pep rally was just the beginning of swag available from the Saber Roar. Watch for more ways to win a t-shirt. Also watch for the next golden moment where we'll surprise an unsuspecting student with a giant cookie. On Friday of homecoming week, the countdown clock started and the game began. This year, the fans prepared for an exciting battle between the Franklin Sabres and the Racine Case Eagles. The Sabres were pumped for the game and charged across the goal line, dominating Racine with a touchdown by Gavin Beck in the first five minutes. After the first half, the band and palms came out for a show to get the fans even more passionate for their team. Although Racine Case Eagles scored two touchdowns turning the tables, the Sabres responded in the second half when Ben Wachter scored three rushing touchdowns. The suspenseful game ended with a final score of Sabres 28 and Eagles 14. The Sabres brought another homecoming victory to Franklin. Homecoming week ended as it has for the last 50 years with the homecoming dance in the school gym. We look forward to bringing you highlights of all the inspiring, fun, and entertaining stories here at Franklin High School in our sixth season of the Sabre Bar. I'm Cassie. And I'm Malik. Peace out, y'all. Ah, Junior winning.